Welcome to Deep Thought, the power of the word. Let us turn, my brothers and sisters, to one of the numerous versions of the Christian Bible for the pretext for today's lesson. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, when God created the universe, the earth was formless and desolate. The raging ocean that covered everything was engulfed in total darkness, and the power of God was moving over the water. Then God commanded, let there be light, and light appeared. God was pleased with what he saw. Then he separated the light from the darkness, and he named the light day and the darkness night. Evening passed and morning came. That was the first day. Two key words that can't, that stand out. Commanded. Right? And named. Both from the voice of God. That is the word of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor to the right and say amen. Turn to your neighbor to the left and say amen. And if you're in one of those party type of churches, turn to your neighbor to the right. Say, hey, can you back that thing up? So I use that as an example. It's not a, a promotion of a particular spiritual path, which I never do. But, you know, there's wisdom in uh, really all holy books, right? And if you look at it, according to the creation, God created the world. According to that particular creation story, God created the world. Through his word, through his voice. Now, I call this the power of the word. Now, the word can be both the written word or the spoken word, right? When what happens is when you speak, you actually affect some, somebody else. Like uh, you, can, you, can, you can like affect somebody's day. Like if you meet somebody and you say mean things to them, they get angry, they feel depressed, they can develop anxiety, they can actually get sick off of just what someone said to them. That's power right there. That is real power. Like if you go to somebody and say, you're ugly, that's power. Or even if you write it so they can see it. Like you get some trolls on YouTube, you know, they try to have some power by saying something, messing with the person. Usually I just delete it. And thankfully I got a thick skin in most cases, right? But... That's a powerful thing. Think about it. Think of, think about it. Just f through a few words, you can you can actually make somebody sick. You can actually that's what the meaning of cursing someone is. You curse them, but you basically setting in motion something. If they receive your curse or if they take it to heart, shoot, they can be sick from it. I mean, you have children. You have people who grow up from adulthood and they messed up just because their parent at a five years old called them stupid. Or somebody called them ugly, right? That's the power of the word, right? You know? And then if you write that word, shoot, yeah, that's power. If you speak that word, that's power. Think about it. Now, you would ask yourselves, well, how is that? Because what happens is you take a set of actions based on what you heard, right? Now, turn that around. Think about it. Instead of calling somebody ugly or stupid, what if you say you're beautiful and smart? Right? You'll be able to go far. I'm going to share something about it. My mother, when I was young, told me I was meant to rule the world. She actually used a Bible verse. You know? She said I was the child in that Bible verse. Now, we could look back at her and say she had some mental health issues, but, you know, you're an eight-year-old child. You know, you're a young child. You gonna believe your mother? She don't want to make sure I get food in my belly, right? She told me I was supposed to be a king. You know, I told her I wanted to drive a bus. She said, "No. If you try to drive a bus, you would have to be disguised, and if they find out who they are, they will stop the bus. That's how important you are." My mother told me that. That was the greatest thing that my mother did for me. And I thought back to it, and people, even throughout life, always had. Uh, High self-esteem. Some people would call it arrogance, but, you know, that's usually what they say when a, a black man is confident, right? And they would question, why you have it? Because at, my t at the right age, the most important person in my life told me I was a king. He used biblical uh, scripture to uh, back it up. And let's have some fun. She actually told me I was the child in Revelation 12. 
So, you know, you believe it and everything. So I'm thinking, I spent most of my life figuring out how, like, to be the king of the world. All right? Think about how powerful that is. Now, if you think, well, that's not powerful, but think about it. You're listening to me now because of a thought planted in my head when I was a child, a word, something said to me by my mother when I was a child. That's why I'm here now, I'm always focused on doing the right thing. It actually kept me out of trouble. This ain't going to say I've had perfect. I'm having perfect. I'm still human. Some things that I did I wouldn't want to discuss publicly. But it's always kept me out of major trouble. Because I said, no, I'm going to be that king. That's always in the back of my head. And in fact, there was a point I thought about running for president. I could have been saying, instead of President Obama, I could have been saying President Wills. And still might do that, right? But through the power of her word, right? Think about it. How many people have been inspired by my word? How many people have uh, started businesses based off of listening to me? Because, see, that's the power of a word. You're simple, a, a person, a mother, saying that her child is smart. Her child will be a king. Her child, and it's not necessarily just a male thing, a, a, child, a father telling his daughter that she is beautiful, that she is worth something, that only the best will do for her will probably keep her from getting pregnant early, from having low self-esteem. Boom. And then she could be, she could grow up whatever she wants to be. If she wants to be a wife to a good man, or if she wants to have a business or have a business and be a wife to a good man, but whatever the case, she'll have high self-esteem. Based on that word. And she might be in a position to help people. Or maybe that teacher. Right. That teacher who encourages her students. Right. I'm going to tell you what. One of the most powerful women I've ever met in my life. Was a woman. She she worked as a clerk when I was working in the government. Right. She was smaller stature. Right. You know. She didn't she didn't have a spectacular education. She wasn't a uh, raving beauty. At least a physical form. A spiritual form was beautiful beyond belief. And the impact she had wasn't on the people around us. We all respected her, but was on her own children. She said one time, she told me one time, the principal wanted to meet with her, right, about her son. And she, she was concerned and everything, but then the principal just wanted to congratulate her on the job she's done with her son, right? But it was the, power, the way she was as a woman, she was very encouraging to her son, the power of the word. See, the word, the word, the written word, the spoken word, you can actually create realities with it. You can create portals. I've talked about portals before on here. All right. You can create because what it is, it communicates ideas. When you speak it into existence, that was, that's why the elders would say, hey, don't, don't, don't put that out there. Don't say anything bad. Don't even put that out there. You speak something into existence when you use the word. If people say, you know what, if someone say, look, we can make this a better world. And you just get a few people that take that message in and then they spread that, that same thought. All of a sudden, you have the world of flame burning away the old and the corrupt. And all of a sudden, you have paradise. Just based off of one person saying that word. The word is powerful. That's how leaders, that's why, that's why in countries where they have coups and stuff, the military take over, first place they go is after the press. When they try to silence because they try to silence the word. Understand that. That's the power of the word. Understand that. In your word, no person, a, a child, a child can inspire something. You know, you get some of these kids, they might just say, hey, they might tell an adult feeling bad or something and say, hey, I think you're a cool person. And that person's life might change. That's how powerful it is. It can change it. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Understand that. So I want you all to think about that. Think about your words. Think about how powerful you are. Every single, every single person has some powerful words. You can either uplifts people around you with that word whether it's spoken or written or you can bring them down and you have a responsibility to use that power wisely so that's all i have for today i want everybody to keep rising and transforming peace and blessings <laughs>